while I've been here. I'm not sure, but uh, I don't really keep up with all that. Um, I, at one point when I um, started preaching, I started writing down everywhere that I'd preached. And, um, you know, it wasn't too long until I uh, got back over something I'd already preached. And the devil started using that against me. And uh, he said, well, you've already preached that. Don't you know nothing new? And um, so I quit worrying about all that, you know. Um, we need the Word of God tonight. That's what we need. And so um, I want you to be much in prayer. And um, another kind of tough message, to be honest. But um, I don't get to pick the messages. You know, God picks these. And um, part of me is excited to know that we're getting strong. And, you know, we're getting uh, stronger as a church. And that, that makes me happy. Um, but, man, I get to be the mouthpiece. And that's kind of tough. So um, I want you to just pray for me tonight. Um, I know God... Um, wants to um, help our church get to levels that it's never been before. And um, I hope and pray that we're almost there, to be honest, um, to where you've never saw it before. I don't know, but um, I do know this. God wants to bless His people. There's no doubt about that tonight. And um, I, I want to be faithful, and I, I want to do my best to let God use me to the best of His ability. And um, when we do that... Um, you know, sometimes it um, takes some sacrifice. And so pray for me that I'd be willing to sacrifice um, and just to be obedient. So um, chapter 5, the book of Second uh, Kings, we're going to read some scripture tonight about a man named Naaman. And um, like I said, very familiar. Um, let me read the scripture and I'll um, go with it from there. Chapter 5, Second Kings. It says, Now Naaman, captain of the host of the king of Syria, was a great man with his master, honorable because by him the Lord... Now pay attention to verse 1, it's very important. It says, um, He was a great man with his master and honorable because by him the Lord had given deliverance unto Syria. So it was by God's help, okay? Now don't forget about that. Or that that's important to my message. It was by the help of the Lord. Not nothing that Naaman was able to do without the help of the Lord. All right, anyways, um, give deliverance unto Syria. So he was a mighty man in valor, but he was a leper. And the Syrians had gone out by companies and had brought away captive out of the land of the Israel a little maid, and she waited on Naaman's wife. And she said unto her mistress, Would God, my Lord, were with the prophet that is in Samaria, for he would recover him of his leprosy. And one went in and told his Lord, saying, Thus and thus, and said he, the maid that is of the land of Israel and the king of Syria said, Go to, go, and I will send a letter unto the king of Israel. And he departed and took with him ten talents of silver and six thousand pieces of gold and ten changes of raiment. And he brought the letter to the king of Israel, saying, Now when this letter is come unto thee, behold, I have therewith sent Naaman my servant to thee, that thou mayest recover him of his leprosy. Now let's skip down to verse 8. 8 says, And it was so when Elisha the man of God heard that the king of Israel had rent his clothes that he sent to the king, saying, Wherefore hast thou rent thy clothes? Let him come now to me, and he shall know that there is a prophet in Israel. So Naaman came with his horses and with his chariot and stood at the door of the house of Elisha. And Elisha sent a messenger uh, unto him, saying, Go and wash in Jordan seven times, and thy flesh shall come again to thee, that thou shalt be clean. But Naaman was wroth and went away and said, Behold, I thought he will surely come out to me and stand and call on the name of the Lord his God and strike his hand over the place and recover the leper. Are not Abana and the Fifar rivers in Damascus better than all the waters in Israel? May I not wash in them and be clean? So he turned and went away in a rage, and his servants came near and spake unto him and said, My father, if the prophet had bid thee to do some great thing, wouldest thou not have done it? How much rather then when he saith to thee, Wash and be clean? Then went he down and dipped himself seven times in Jordan, according to the saying of the man of God, and his flesh came again like unto the flesh of a little child, and he was clean. Now that's all the scripture I'm going to read tonight, and I know that's more than I usually read, but um, nevertheless I wanted to um, get through the entire um, story that's recorded here. 
Now I want you to be much in prayer tonight. Like I said, my throat's weak and I'm weak and everything's weak. But um, the, no doubt the flesh gets weak, but the spirit is always willing. I don't know if you realize that or not tonight. So um, we want God um, to use us tonight in a great way. Now um, I want you to know something tonight, just a few things. Um, I, I, I will stay in the Bible tonight and I will preach you the Word. I've never done anything any different. I'm not going to. So um, I began to think about um, the Scripture tonight when God... God, I was over here in the office this afternoon, God laid this on my heart, and um, I began to think about it, and then I thought about our congregation tonight. Now, whether you realize it or not, um, there's a lot of different opinions in this congregation. Now, does that surprise anybody in this building tonight uh, to know that there's a lot of different opinions? Now, um, I want you to know something tonight. I've got my opinion tonight, Keith. I've got, uh, I'm very fleshly, just like anyone else, and I, I've got my opinion tonight, but I I found that uh, my opinion nine times out of ten does not add up with what God's Word is. And because that um, I'm carnal and because I'm fleshly tonight, um, me, me wants one thing and God wants another thing. Understand what I'm trying to say? That's what uh, some of my guys say. They me want one thing, you, you know what I'm trying to say, right? So anyways, there's always a difference there and there's always um, a battle there. But I want you to know, I, I thought about Naaman and uh, no doubt Naaman... Um, he said right here in one verse, he said that um, he thought, think about that for just a minute, and let's take that tonight and let's look at that. In other words, um, he had preconceived ideas about how this was all going to take place. Now, um, you and I, as God's people, we are just like Naaman was. We um, have got a lot of things planned out in our mind about how God is going to do things, and um, I don't know about you, but when, when something burdens me or when I'm praying for something, I've got this, uh, maybe this thing in my mind this template about um, how that I think that God will bring that to pass. Now uh, has anybody ever uh, been surprised by God before? Has God um, ever surprised you maybe how he does things and maybe how um, he brings things out and maybe how that um, it's amazing to me how that God can um, take a heart that's broken and how that uh, maybe the situation doesn't change maybe um, the need doesn't change but God can just get in an individual's heart and in their life and they can be in a storm but um, God can just speak and everything can just be still. Now that um, still amazes me today. You know I, I look at um, a lot of the wonders that God does and they amaze me. Isn't he not an amazing God tonight? Is God not amazing tonight folks? And so um, I began to think about Naaman. Now Naaman uh, no doubt he was a great man and he was a mighty man uh, and all these things but I want you to know something tonight. God is no respect a person tonight. God, uh, listen, I don't have any favor with God um, just because I'm going to preach two times today. That doesn't get me or gain me any favor with God. So um, I want you to know something. Even though Naaman was this great and was this mighty man, he had pride about him. I want you to realize that tonight. Now, uh, when God gets his way in our lives, it's going to hurt our pride. Whether uh, Now listen, this is going to be one of them men Messages, but God wants us to be stronger. Everybody, um, whether you're male or whether you're female in this building tonight, you've got some pride about you tonight. Now, um, you might not want to take responsibility for it, but uh, maybe Ed said over in our training union class, and man, he hit the nail on the head. Uh, he said, I'm the most humble person I know. Now, think about that for a few minutes. Think about, I am the most humble person I know. That uh, speaks volumes tonight. That is so good and that is so right and that is so fitting for Naaman right here. Naaman uh, approached down there and he took all these things with him. He took ten raiments of clothes and he took the gold and uh, he took all that stuff and if you add that up it was worth about a hundred thousand dollars in our money uh, and I guess he took that and I guess he thought that that was going to get him somewhere. Folks listen to me tonight. Money does not get you anywhere with God. Did you just hear what I said? Money. You could be a millionaire tonight and that does not get you any status with God tonight and I want you to know this tonight you um, can be the best neighbor the best person in your whole neighborhood and uh, you can do all these different things and uh, morally you can be almost without a flaw that does not get you anywhere with God what gets you somewhere with God is being born again what gets you somewhere with God is going down to the river and being obedient 
and dip in yourself seven times. What gets you somewhere with God, what gets you status with God, is spending time with God. Amen? In other words, communing with Him, talking with Him. Amen? Naaman thought. Well, he said right here, he said, I thought that you'd just come out. I guess he was expecting a magic trick. You know what I mean? Listen to me now, folks, the God I serve does not do magic tricks, all right? Um, It don't work that way. Now, uh, I I began to think, and something I didn't really preach about this morning, but uh, you're thinking, oh my goodness, here we go. No, listen tonight, I began to think about doctoring tonight. And and, you know, when we bring that word up, and we talk about the Baptist doctoring, I want you to know something tonight, whether you realize it or not, now you all don't write a letter to the TBC, don't tell them I said this or whatever, but I want you to know something tonight, Baptist do not know it all, all right? Anybody with me? What? I can't believe you just said that in our church. Baptists don't know it all tonight. I think we need the doctrine of Jesus Christ. What about you? I think we need the Word of God tonight. I think we need to be Christ-like tonight. Anybody with me? The Baptist or the Methodist or Naaman, per se, didn't have it all figured out. Amen? Listen to me now, folks. Me and you have got to get to the point to where we don't try to figure everything out and we say, God, here I am. God, what can I do? God, send me. I want to be used by you. Naaman came down there and he brought all this stuff with him. Now listen, I can see Naaman. See, Naaman failed to remember that he was a leper. Huh? And But he might have said, well, you know what? I might be a leper, but man, I'm the best leper I know. Think about it tonight. Anybody can relate to that? Is anybody in the building a sinner tonight? Huh? Yeah, but you're probably the best sinner you know. Amen? Folks, we've all sinned. We've all come short of the glory of God. And you know what? If tomorrow comes before... Some of y'all probably wonder what I do over here in my office. Well, I get over there and I write my messages out. You know what I mean? Yeah, right. I get over there and I try to pray and I seek the Lord. I say, God, listen, before I can ever even climb behind this sacred desk, I say, God, I am a sinful man. God, I have sinned. I have come short. God, forgive me. Clean me so I can just be a mouthpiece. Listen to me, folks. We The Bible teaches us that dirty water and clean water can't come out of the same fountain. Amen? In other words, we have got to be different. We've got to be set aside to be effective in this world today. The Naaman, I can hear him now. He was thinking to himself, well, right over here in verse 1, it says he was a hero, Keith. Huh? Anybody in the congregation tonight a hero? There ain't nobody going to own up to that, and I know <laughs> Your preconceived ideas. Are you a hero or are you a legend preacher? I, well, let me just say it like this. I've been coming to this church ever since I was knee high to a grasshopper. Folks, listen to me. Doesn't matter how long you've been here or how long you've not been here. Amen? Get it out of your head tonight that Naaman might have thought, well, I'm the boss. You know what I mean? I've got all these men under me. I am the boss. In other words, I'm the big rooster in the pen. You know what? You liked that, didn't you? In other words, I am the man. Listen, you can't approach the throne of God like that and get anywhere with him. You've got to come humble, the Bible says, as a little child. In other words, you've got to put on humility. We had the perfect example when Christ, as perfect as he was, as sinless as he was, do you realize this man had no flaw to him? There was not, you all got to wake up a little bit, amen? You look like you've seen a ghost with two of these in one day, Derek. We can't stand it. Yes, we can stand it. God wants you and I to get stronger and and to grow greater and to wax stronger so we can reach Granger County. Amen. Listen, Naaman takes $100,000 with him, takes no doubt a great number of people with him. Listen to me. When you really, 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 truly realize that you need God's provision in your life, it will humble you. Amen. Do you process what I just said when you truly, 
Now, different things bring us to that point. Sickness brings us to that point. There ain't nothing like it. When you get sick, you'll realize just how much you need God's provisions in your life. Amen? And when you get in need, and maybe you lose your job, and maybe, you know what I'm trying to say, you get in somebody's billfold, they'll pay attention real quick. When we get like that, we realize we need God's provisions in our life. Listen to me now, folks. We need God's provisions in our life tonight. Amen? We need need God's help every day. Naaman might have been the best leper he knew, but he was still a leper. He got down there and he had his opinion. Everybody's got one, right? How about we just let God keep driving this ship we're in? What do you think? Let's let God just keep driving the church. How do you think? Does that sound good? <clears throat> all right. Naaman got down there. He had all these ideas about how it was all going to go. And guess what? Elisha walked out and he said, go down there and just dip yourself seven times. Send his messenger. Thank you, James. See? Send his messenger. Said, go down there. He sent word. How's that sound? Sent word. Said, go tell him to dip himself seven times. This wasn't hardly good enough, was it? Huh? Wasn't what he's expecting? Wasn't what he was really wanting? Jordan was nasty. Did you hear me? It was nasty. And evidently, Naaman might have thought there was a better river. That's where we're at as God's people today. Do you realize that? Humility and being humble. And, you know, approaching His throne of grace through humility and saying, God, you know what? I am nothing today. I'm just a... You know why God's people are doing without some things today? It's because of their pride. Amen? Anybody want to amen that or am I? I don't know. What do you think? You think it's because of our pride today? Why? Because he said, I have got a storehouse full of blessings. In other words, I've got more than you can ever hold. I've got more than you can ever handle. And I want to open up the windows. This is the book of Malachi. And I want to open them up. And I want to pour you out a blessing that you cut cannot contain. God has got the provisions we need, folks. But we've got to approach Him humbly. Seeking Him. I thought, a lot, I thought a thousand times about when his servants, Naaman's servants, asked him, said, well, if he'd asked you to do something big, wouldn't you have done it? Think about that a minute. Sometimes God, nine times out of ten, asks you to do little things. Right? Everybody wants a big job, right? Think about it. Has God ever asked you to do something you think, well, Lord, that ain't much? It's kind of like we can't never be happy with it. You know what I mean? God asks us to sing, well, that's too much. Right, Gail? Well, that's too much, Lord. I, I can't do that, Gail. I appreciate you. I can't do that, Lord. Well, then what about just sending somebody a text? Or what about calling? Well, God, that ain't very hardly that. You know, that ain't big enough. That ain't going to matter. Listen to me, folks. I learned the hard way. When God asks you to do something, whether it's big or whether it's little, it's worth doing tonight. Amen? Listen, he said, just go down there and just dip yourself seven times and you'll be made whole. Now, I want to finish this message up. Naaman, I can see him now going down there thinking, this ain't going He had his own opinion about what what he was supposed to do. Everybody's got opinions, right? You ever think about how many times every one of us assume, right? I ain't going to tell you what the word assume means, all right? I'll hold that back from you. Assume. Let me ask you a question. When you assume things, what usually happens? On his way down there, I can probably see him walking down. He's thinking, well, I ain't got nothing loose. Listen, he went down there, and I'm fully persuaded that he had dipped himself six times, and he was still a leper. What do you think? You, you think maybe he got dipped one time, and a few of them went away, and another time, a few of No, I think he, six times, he was still a leper. Aren't you, I bet... He was thinking to himself, this ain't going to work. If God tells you to do something, it will work. Amen? 
He told Joshua when Moses was dead, he told him in the Word, he said, Now Moses is dead. And I'm sure that was a big thing on the children of Israel. They had always followed Moses. But you can read over in the book of Joshua where he told him, he said, Now Moses is dead. He said, Be strong and be of good courage and be not dismayed. Listen to me tonight, folks. As we approach life this week, as we approach the future, we've got to be strong. Amen? We've got to be courageous. We don't need to be dismayed. Some of y'all look like I let all the air out of you today. <coughs> what do you think? God loves us tonight. He loves me. He loves you. And he wants, if, if you're not where you need to be tonight, He wants to restore you to depths and to limits beyond that you've never been before. God wants you to be there. But you have got to get your opinion out of this thing. Amen? What do you think? I learned a long time ago, my opinion, you know, everybody's got one. We've already said that. Naaman had one. You've got one. But I learned a long time ago, the only one that matters is God's. What do you think? I don't know where you're at tonight. Everybody stand. You can get your song ready. I'm coming to a close. You know, I don't know where you're at tonight. I don't know. I don't know. I can tell you where your preacher is. I'm going to go home tonight and sleep like a baby. If you can't do that tonight, if you're troubled tonight, I want to invite you to come to this altar. Now listen, you may not come to this altar tonight. I know there's been a lot of food today. You know what I mean? Been a lot of spiritual food today. I hope it's all been appreciated. I don't know. But I promise if you'll eat it, you'll get stronger. If you... It's not something that's going to happen overnight. I understand that and I realize that. Getting back to God spiritually takes some time. You realize that? Has anybody ever been away from God in this congregation? Yeah, I've been there. Away from Him. Bobby, I didn't just snap my fingers and get right back. It, it was a journey. But it all had to start with me realizing that I wasn't where I needed to be. And when I realized that, I, hey, I'm not where I need to be, then I can become humble. You can't get back to God unless you're humble. So if you have a need tonight, I'd like to invite you to come to the altar. The only way I can preach... The only way you can teach, you can witness, you can do anything for God is through and by leaving your opinions out of it. That's a hard message, ain't it? It is if you really think about it, I promise. Because it goes against everything you want to do. So I, I, I would assume right now by the way I feel inside, some of y'all's opinion to me not what it used to be after this morning. Just being honest. But I love you just the same. I mean it. And I'll prove it. I want what God wants. I want a church that God wants. We've heard the Word of God today. And if I get in a place to where I can't preach the Bible, then I need to preach somewhere else. That's as honest and as blunt as I know how to put it for everybody in the building. We've heard the truth. I won't apologize for it. What do you need to do tonight? You need to pray. You need to move up. What do you need to do? Why do they sing?